Hello, welcome back for another video on Ark Survival Ascended. Today we're diving into the top 10 creatures you need to tame on the Scorched Earth map. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. In at number 10 is going to be the Megatherium, being an extremely useful creature for many occasions. As an omnivore, it excels at gathering meat, berries, fibre, silk, cactus sap, chitin and many more. With a decent weight stat, high health pool and high damage, and having one of the deadliest buffs in the entire game. Whenever it kills bugs, it will receive the Insect Killer buff, where the Megatherium's damage will be multiplied by 375% and will reduce all incoming damage by around 75%, making the Megatherium an absolute powerhouse. And being a scorched earth is full of bugs, the Megatherium will thrive when exploring most caves, clearing them out with ease, and is also extremely useful when exploring the desert. Being able to easily take down the Goliaths, that's our Deathworms and Alpha Deathworms. Adding to this, you can wield your weapons while riding, and if your Megatherium does take too much damage, when accessing its radio menu it does have the sit option which will give it a small buff reducing its food consumption by 50% and recovering its health by 2% per second which will heal up to 50% all of this combine makes the mega firm a very strong battle mount and an extremely useful creature in terms of utility which is why it makes the list in at number 9 is the Rock Elemental, quite possibly the most expensive creature to tame on the list, as the best way to tame these Goliaths is via cannonballs to the face, but it is well worth it once you manage to tame one. The Rock Elemental has a great weight stat, extremely high health pool, and high damage. It is THE tank of Scorched Earth, most likely being the go-to method of soaking bullets. When playing PvP, they take 50% reduced damage from incoming creature attacks, being completely immune to Wyvern Elemental attacks makes them perfect in dealing with clusters of wyverns. With its melee attack and range attack, both with the ability to damage stone structures, the ranged rock throw will obliterate stone and can be scaled by leveling up its melee damage to make the attack even more devastating and also has the option to be set into turret mode, making it a great base defender. You definitely don't want to be trying to headbutt any boulders like this guy here. They are also pretty handy for gathering resources, being great for harvesting sand, stone, wood and many more. The rock column is a must have when diving into the world of scorched earth. Taking the number 8 spot is going to be the Rex. The Rex's high health pool and high damage output is undeniably unrivaled by any dinosaur on Scorched Earth. It is pound for pound the best boss killer. It also does have the perk of being able to equip a tech saddle, making the Rex a serious force to be reckoned with. It's no surprise to see the Rex make it to the list. Coming in at number 7 is going to be the Argentavis. Oh yes, the jack of all trades makes its return once again. The Argentavis is extremely valuable for many reasons, most likely being the go-to flyer for transportation, especially that of heavy loads. With its high weight and high stamina stats, and having weight reduction for a wide variety of heavy resources, and still makes the Argentavis and Ankosaurus combination the go-to for farming and transporting all that tasty metal. Once saddled, it can be used as a portable smithy making it exceptionally useful for crafting those expensive blueprints that you could never craft in a smithy. Being able to craft and repair your gear can be invaluable when out exploring. They also make very good battle mounts, having a decent health and damage stat, with the rapid regeneration buff at its disposal, which will activate whenever the Argentavis bites or consumes a carcass. The Argentavis will rapidly regenerate health and stamina at an alarming rate for 20 seconds. The buff will also be refreshed with every bite of a carcass. The Argent Tavis makes for a perfect taming aid, with its ability to carry two creatures at once, being able to carry small to medium creatures in its talons, while simultaneously carrying small creatures in its mouth. The amount of utility that the Argentavis brings to the table is unrivaled. In at number 6 is going to be the Mantis, which quite possibly has one of the coolest abilities in the entire game. Being able to dual wield metal tools and weapons makes the Mantis very useful for many things. Whether it be equipping it with metal hatches or picks can make short work of any harvesting task, or equipping pikes or swords paired with leveling melee damage can make short work of any foe that decides to tangle with you. In addition to this, the coolest of all, handing them dual wield wooden clubs, where you'll be able to go on a tear around the map, knocking out even the largest of creatures in just a few hits, which makes knockout taming much easier, much cheaper and much more fun. And if a player is ever on the receiving end of an angry mantis with wooden clubs, well it's pretty much lights out. Not to mention the mantis is the best way of gathering organic polymer. You could tame a low level male and a bunch of low level females, breed them to your heart's content and once they become adults, you can slaughter them all and chop them up with a chainsaw, which will be the easiest organic polymer and chitin farm you'll ever experience. 
Taking the number 5 spot is going to be the Phyla Coleo. The Phyla is quite possibly the most popular battle mount choice for many survivors. Having strong stats across the board, being a very versatile travel mount, good speed maneuverability with the ability to jump and climb vertical surfaces. When latched onto a vertical surface, can pounce and ambush a variety of different creatures and any unsuspecting survivors. Giving them a jump scare like they never experienced before, being quite a small carnivore, they almost have full access to every cave on the map making them a great cave in mount. And even though they are only a medium sized predator, they are not to be underestimated. It is not their stats that make them shine, but the ability to inflict the status effect that is gnashed, which will activate and refresh whenever the filer uses its bite attack, which is a bleeding effect that will drain 10% of the target's health over five seconds. Meaning the filer is exceptionally good at taking down creatures far larger than itself. Anything with a massive health pool is rather welcoming for the filer. This bleeding effect cannot be negated by saddle armor or natural armor for that matter which for example makes the phyla perfect for taking down rock elementals the phyla colio is the perfect portrayal of david vs goliath almost any giant that isn't a boss is no match for the phyla in at number four is going to be the Procoptodon. If you want to get somewhere quickly by land, the Kangaroo is the one to take you there. And it's one of my personal favorite creatures on the entire map. It can jump great distances, which can be boosted by holding the jump button down and aiming upward towards the direction you want to go. It has a basic bite attack that deals measly damage. However, it does also have a kick attack, which will deal great knockback and can be very useful in many situations. This kick attack is also great for harvesting berries. The Kangaroo can also also use this kick to keep moving forward when fully over encumbered. It is only forward though, you cannot go left and right in this state, but still can be useful in some cases. It also has the ability to pick up small or baby creatures inside its pouch, which humans can also ride in as a passenger. Adding to this, whenever a baby is in a female mate boosted Procoptodon's pouch, it will reduce the baby's food consumption by 50% and will double the imprint affinity that the baby receives with each care, which is evident in this clip, where the baby in the pouch receives a 7% imprint affinity and the baby not in the pouch only gets 3% making them extremely useful when raising babies due to its speed and maneuverability head with a decent pump action shotty which can be wielded by the rider makes the procoptodon very useful in taking down dangerous threats i used to kill alpha wyverns left right and center using this tactic on ase but on asa due to not being able to level movement speed on your creatures unless on a server where you can do so this tactic doesn't really work and the wyverns can hit you quite easily easily. So if you haven't already, I highly recommend taming a few kangaroos. I can guarantee you will not regret it. In at number 3 is of course going to be the Phasalosuchus, and as expected, it is not tamed via typical methods. Long story short, don some ghillie armor, equip with some grenades, head to the desert, find Phasalosuchus, allow it to burrow underground, and wait until you see a sand mound above the sand. Throw a grenade on top of it, it will pop out and you'll be able to ride it, and you'll need to drive it into clusters of harvestable rocks for it to gain torpidity, eventually knocking it out where it's tamed just like any other carnivore, and prefers extraordinary kibble. Once tamed you will own an absolute beast of a battle mount with an array of cool abilities. With every bite your Phasalosuchus lands will inflict an armor debuff that affects most creatures. This damage debuff will increase with every bite and will cap at 25%. When pressing the jump key it can burrow underground and once underground it has this sandstorm like ability. This can temporarily stun or immobilize any creatures and human players caught inside. Any flyers that get too close will also be grounded with the players being dismounted and that's probably not a place you want to be. When pressing the attack key during the storm, any targets inside will begin to submerge. When fully submerged, the Phasalosuchus will deal a large chunk of damage to any targets inside. This seems to be percentage based. It's pretty badass. It also has a tail whip attack, which doesn't seem to have any effect on humans, but if used against creatures, any creatures affected will be unable to attack for a short duration of time. I have also noticed that when used against wild creatures, it will temporarily make them flee. Another thing it can do when burrowed underground, when driven into rocks, it will harvest flint by the bucket load and we all love a bit of flint for all those bullets we need to make and one last thing when burrowed if you stay perfectly still your phasalosuchus will automatically dig under the sand becoming invisible to the naked eye all of these reasons are why you need to tame a phasalosuchus 
taking the number two spot is going to be the cute little fuzzball, the Jaboa. Oh, look at that cute little face. They are man's best friend when playing Scorched Earth. Being as they are a shoulder pet, they will have 50% weight reduction for anything inside their inventory when perched on your shoulder, allowing you to carry far more items when out exploring. But of course, what makes the Jaboa so special is its ability to warn you of incoming weather storms. There are four variants of storms that can occur on Scorched Earth, some being deadlier than others. Minutes before these storms hit, the Jaboa will perform sounds and actions to warn you of the incoming storm, giving you enough time to get yourself to a safe location. Unless of course rain is coming, then we'll be having a whale of a time. I've said this before and I'll say it again, heroes don't always wear capes. The Jaboa will 100% save your life, which is why you need to take one or 10. And taking the number one spot is of course going to be the Wyvern. The Lord of the Skies has returned and we can finally fly Wyverns again on official servers. The only creature on the list that cannot be tamed via usual methods. You will have to put it all on the line and head on down into the deep dangerous Wyvern Scar where you'll have to snatch those fertilized eggs from right under the parents noses with a bunch of angry Wyverns pursuing hot on your heels for the most adrenaline fueled experience you'll receive in Ark. Undoubtedly the hardest task of all, but will become much easier when you have yourself your own wyvern. Fertilized eggs will have to be incubated with a bunch of ACs or by using a bunch of standard torches. Once popping out your babies, the only source of food they will consume is wyvern milk, where you'll have to knock out wild female wyverns to grab wyvern milk out of their inventory. Once your baby becomes adult, you will own a beast like no other and will have full control over the skies. There are three different wyvern variants to choose from. Poison, fire, or lightning. They will soar through the sky quicker than any flyer in the game, setting alight anything you please, shooting homing missile like poison balls, or creating your own storm with the lightning wyverns. Devastating shocking beam. The wyvern is useful for almost anything and everything. Being able to pick larger creatures than most flyers, gather wood, thatch, and cactus sap with its flap attack, which can also be used against wild and tame creatures and also human players, to yeet them into oblivion with the extreme knockback effect. Equipped with a strong bite attack, great for harvesting meat and hide. There's no better feeling once you take to the skies with your wyvern. And that is also going to be the end of the video for today. Hope you all enjoyed the video and if you did enjoy it or found it helpful in any way, please consider liking, commenting, sharing and subscribing for more art content. These videos do take a long time to make so I'd really appreciate the support and I'll catch you all in the next one. Take care, goodbye. Rockwell out.